poem. I, I wrote this poem as the bombs were dropping over Gaza, and I was the media spokesperson for the coalition in uh, Canada, Toronto at the time, when we were doing demonstrations, and we were rehearsing every day of how to break into the media, because Palestinians were constantly told that you just don't understand how to speak to the media. If, if you just uh, fix your English, if you use the correct international uh, resolutions, if you stop getting so aggressive when you speak and just calm down and smile, then the media will, more like, will be more likely to listen to you. So we're like, okay, this, that's pretty racist, but let's go for it. <laughs> uh, and we practiced and we practiced uh, and came up with the perfect sound bites and then we walked into this press conference and all of the media questions might as well have been written by the Israeli ministry. We weren't actually able to say anything because we, ha we were having to defend every position. So this person asked me, uh, do you, wouldn't everything be resolved if you Palestinians could just stop teaching hatred to your children? And since I wrote this poem and performed it, I get emails on a daily basis from Palestinians that say, I was speaking here or there, and that's the question I got asked. Uh, and to me, this is really the core of the issue. When you're able to, human, to dehumanize another people to the level where you can look them in the eye and ask them, why do you teach your children to hate as if they're animals? Uh, that's the racism that the Israeli state stands on. And that's the racism that the international media portrays towards Palestinians, that level of dehumanization. So I couldn't uh, answer in a soundbite, and this poem is certainly not a soundbite, but fashit <laughs> I can't translate that. So <laughs> if anyone knows, we'll do a translation later, but I don't know the translation. Today? Today? Yes, that one. Off, off your chest. That's right. Today, my body was a TV'd massacre. Today, my body was a TV'd massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits. Today, my body was a TV'd massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits. Today, my body was a TV'd massacre. And I perfected my English. And I learned all my UN resolutions. And I went in with a smile, but still he asked me, Ms. Ziada, don't you think this would all be resolved if you would just stop teaching so much hatred to your children? Pause. I look inside of me for strength to be patient. I look inside of me for strength to be patient, but patience is not at the tip of my tongue. Patience is not at the tip of my tongue. Patience has just escaped me as the bombs drop over Gaza. Pause. Rafif, remember to smile. Rafif, remember you're on camera. You have to remember to smile. Pause. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. We teach life after they have occupied the last skies. We teach life after they have built their settlements and apartheid walls. After the last skies, we teach life, sir. But today, Today my body was a TV'd massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits. And you see, every story needs a hook, so you need to give us a hook. Give us a story of a woman in Gaza who needs medication. No, don't mention that word occupation. Don't mention that word apartheid. That's too political, you see. We just want human stories, personal stories. You have to help me as a journalist to help you tell your story, which is an apolitical story. We just want human stories, human stories, you see. Just people who need medication, maybe human stories. How about you? Do you have enough bone broken limbs to cover the sun? Hand me over your dead, hand me over your dead and give me the list of their names, but make sure it does not exceed 1,200 word limits. Today, my body was a TV massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits, made to hook those that are desensitized to terrorist blood, but they felt sorry. They felt sorry and wrote stories for the dead cattle over Gaza. 
So I give them statistics and UN resolutions and I speak their language. We condemn, we deplore, we reject. These are not two equal sides. Occupier and occupied, we condemn, we deplore, we reject. Occupier and occupied, these are not two equal sides. And a hundred dead, two hundred dead, and a thousand dead, and a hundred dead, two hundred dead, and a thousand dead. And I recount, I recount, and between that war crime and massacre, I vent out words and I smile not exotic. I smile, not terrorist, and I recount, I recount, a hundred dead, two hundred dead, a thousand dead, and I recount, I recount, a hundred dead, two hundred dead, a thousand dead. Is anyone out there? Will anyone listen? Will you report this? Please, please, is anyone out there? Will anyone listen? Will anyone listen? I wish, I wish I could just wail over their bodies. I wish they would just stop asking me these questions. I wish I could just wail over their bodies, run barefoot in every refugee camp and hold every child, cover their ears so they wouldn't have to hear the sound of bombing for the rest of their life the way I do. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. And let me just tell you, no sound bite I come up with. No sound bite. No matter how good my English gets, no matter how well I practice, no sound bite, no sound bite. No soundbite will fix this. No soundbite will bring them back to life. And no soundbite will fix this. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. We Palestinians wake up every morning to teach the rest of the world life, sir. Well.